Hunter Biden has said many times that he would be willing to sit down with MAGA Republicans at an open hearing in public and they could ask him any question that they wanted to. But they've always insisted that these hearings take place behind closed doors. They say it's because they're talking about highly sensitive business matters. I call bullshit on that. We all know the real reason they want to keep it behind closed doors. It's because they want to be able to control the narrative. They know that if they come out of these hearings and say Hunter Biden's name at the beginning or end of any sentence, that the MAGA cult will believe anything they say. Hell, they could say that Hunter Biden was responsible for the Sharon Tate murders and the MAGA cult would buy into it. That's how gullible they are. And I say that because they still think JFK is alive. So it's not that far-fetched. But when they got him behind closed doors and had the opportunity to talk about sensitive business matters, they didn't. They just played the same old trick they've been playing this entire time. They kept circling back and talking about his drug addiction. And as someone who is recovering from drug addiction and alcohol himself, that's always been very triggering to me. And I've made videos talking about this very thing before. And I plan on talking about it more because I don't think that people realize the damage that that kind of rhetoric can do to recovering addicts. When you're in recovery and you look over and you see another addict being berated or made fun of or told that they could never do it, politics goes right out the window. There's been several times that I've looked over and saw someone being made fun of or being told you could never beat it. And I didn't know if the guy voted Democrat or Republican. I didn't know if they went to church or not. I didn't know if they preferred pineapple on a pizza or not. And I didn't care because just seeing them be treated that way would be triggering enough. So you would think when they got Hunter behind closed doors, they'd want to talk about those sensitive business dealings, but they didn't. They just went right back to their same old ridiculous, disgusting tactics and started talking about his drug addiction. And I wish these had have been public. I wish that people could have seen this because Hunter Biden absolutely owned them when they got him in the, well, when they tried to put him in a corner. He was being questioned by Hagman and she said this, uh, you don't have to explain addiction. I'm asking for dates. To which Hunter replied, okay, I don't have. Because if you understood addiction, you don't necessarily have dates. The one date you remember is this. You remember the day that you quit and you remember the day you first started when you were 11 years old and you had your first drink. You don't remember all the times in between in which you weren't an addict in which you got sober, in which you tried to get sober, in which you had long stretches of sobriety during that period of time. And everybody knows this. Everyone has someone that they love who has gone through this. I can tell you as someone recovering from addiction that Hunter Biden is spot on right there. I can't tell you. I can tell you. I refer to a certain section of my life as the missing years. For me, it was 2005 through, two, through 2012. Those seven years of my life are a complete and total blur. But I definitely remember August 11th, 2012. That's the day that I slammed right straight into the wall. For over 25 years of my life, I've been a musician. I went out and I played in dive bars in my part of the world. Busted my balls for years doing that. On August 11th, 2012, I'm standing on stage and I am drunk and peeled out of my mind. And that reality just began to hit me right straight in the face. I got a packed room full of people, all dancing, all into what we're doing. At one point in the show, I dropped down on my knees. A lot of people thought, oh, it's part of the show. He's just into it. He's just into the show. No, it's because I realized that I'd hit that wall. And I realized that if I continued going down the road I was on, I wasn't going to be able to be sitting in this chair. If you'd have told me on that day back in 2012, that on this day in 2024, I'd be sitting here talking to you guys. I'd have said, no way in the world. As a matter of fact, I had already told people around me to prepare for my funeral. I had already told people around me, oh, I won't make it. I'm not going to make it very far. I'll be here maybe a year or two tops. That's, that's the mindset that I was in. He's absolutely right. And I had moments during those seven years where I might not have drank for six months. I don't remember those months at all. And I don't, there's a whole lot of conversations that's been had that I don't remember. And as a musician, I can't count the times that someone's walked up to me and said, man, I saw you and your band play one night and you guys played Ship of Fools by Bob Seger and it was the best rendition I ever heard. And I'm like, I don't even ever remember singing that song at all. Did we learn that? Did we do that? I've had people walk up to me and say, hey man, you played my birthday party one year. And I'm like, was that you? That's 
that's part of being an addict. You don't remember. It's a big, gigantic blur. So when so, if someone said, I would completely be a lost ball in high weeds if somebody sat down and said, where was you on September 27th of 2008? I have no idea. Because that's part of being an addict. You don't remember those years. He's spot on. You remember when you first started and you remember when you, when you stopped and when you slammed into that wall. For me, I can't say that I remember... I remember my very first beer, but I wouldn't necessarily say that's where I started because it took me a while for that to end up hooking me. I just remember I reached a point where for the longest time, I was just the guy that went out and drank and played music and I had fun. Never, you know, never hurt anybody, never done nothing wrong, never got arrested, believe it or not. Like, I can't believe that either. But I just went along just being the fun loving drunk that was singing to the crowd. And then I kept drinking, drinking, the drinking got heavier. One day I said to myself, I can't get on stage. I don't have the strength to get on stage. And me and my band had written songs about drugs and, and things like that. And in one of our songs, one of the punchlines was, she was writing bad checks for lore sets and drinking $3 wine. And so people would literally come up and hand me pills in between sets. Hey, play that song, here's you one. And I ended up having a whole collection of these things. I didn't even know what they were. And then one day, I'm talking to a bandmate and I'm like, hey, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get on stage or not. And I told him about this collection that I had of drugs I didn't even know what was. And he was like, I can tell you what they are and I can tell you what they'll do to you. And I'll never forget him saying, hey, do you see this one here? If you take this one, you'll be able to sing and drink all night long. Really? Okay, let me try that. And I remember the day I tried that and I felt like Superman. I remembered the words to every song. I played guitar like a boss. I was in control. And I thought, wow, this is great. I'll, I'm going to use this from here on out. You know, I'm, I'm going to use this. And for the longest time, I was in denial because if someone asked me, do you take drugs? No, no, I'm not a drug addict at all because I only use it when I play music. That was my excuse and my cop out for years until August 11th of 2012 when I slammed straight into that wall. But there's another part here in this Hunter Biden deposition that I wanted to read to you because it's another point that Hunter makes that definitely needs to be talked about. Matt Gates is talking with Hunter and he starts off, he says, okay, my apology. And then he quotes Hunter Biden. He says, skeletons of his family may make it hard for him to put us through the ringer in pursuit of the office. It's just pure bullshit. It continues regardless. He's still using that line by proxy. He doesn't say it himself that directly, but all of his advisors do. And then Matt Gates said, do you recall saying that? To which Hunter said, no, I don't recall sending this. But I can tell you this, Mr. Gates, number one is this. This is me on, supposed to be to my daughter, February 22nd of 2019. And I'm literally on a daily basis trying to kill myself. It has nothing to do with business. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's me complaining in every different way, shouting out at the world and literally in complete and utter agony. And my beautiful daughter is literally trying to save my life and reach out to me. And I go on a tangent and a tirade and I act like a child. And I say things that I would never, ever, ever want to be read because they don't resemble anything resembling the truth about the way that I think about my dad, who literally was also at this time trying to save my life. And so I don't know what you're trying to get at here. I'm going to tell you, folks, that was actually kind of hard for me to read because I can relate to that so, so much. I can't count the times over the years that people reached out and tried to help me, and I can't count the times that I went off on drunken tirades. I know for a fact there's a whole lot of text messages and emails and, and conversations that I've had with folks that I would never want to be read out loud, nor would I ever want to hear again. And I've had things put in front of me. And do you remember saying that? And I read it and go, no, I, I don't. I'm deeply ashamed that I did. People really doesn't understand that the, the hold that addiction can get, and it can put you in a completely different headspace and cause you to say, do, and act certain ways that you otherwise never would. And as a musician, going back to what I said earlier, I played songs that I don't even remember learning. And people would be like, yeah, I saw you play the song. And I don't even, I don't even remember sitting down with my guitar to learn the song. And I've had people show me videos. Hey, I, I recorded you this night. Do you remember this? And I'm like, no, I don't, where was that even at? 
I can't count the times that I see pictures and I say, where was that? And somebody's like, oh, this was that bar we played at in North Carolina. When? What year did we play that in? No recollection of it. But yet I was standing up right in front of an audience. I was entertaining them. I was putting on a show. And whatever people would say to me, Brando, I think you're getting a little too far out there. I think you're, think you're taking it a little too far. I would always say, oh, I'm in control of this. I got this. And sometimes I would lash out at people. And sometimes I would act like a toddler. When I read that, it doesn't make me think less of Hunter Biden. It makes me respect him more because he's owning it. He's saying, yeah, I acted like a child. My own daughter was trying to help me. My dad was trying to help me. I acted like a child. That's someone that truly cares about recovering, and that's someone who is trying to turn their life around and do better and be a better person. So I wish these, I wish these hearings had been right out in the open so that more addicts could have seen this because I really believe that if they could have saw this unfold in public, I have a feeling that their opinions of Hunter Biden may have started changing, or at least their opinions of the Republicans dragging him through the mud might have changed because it's not an easy thing to watch. They get him behind closed doors. They could have talked about their business dealings, but they had to keep circling back to this because at the end of the day, that's all they got. And to sit and pray upon addiction and recovering addicts and try to belittle and bring all those skeletons out and show it to them and say, was this you? It's one of the most disgusting tactics that I've ever seen. Their case on Hunter Biden has fell completely apart right in front of their faces. And that's all they got to latch on to as well. This guy did have a dark past. Let's, let's, let's just go for that. Let's sling that at the wall in hopes, hope that, in hopes that that sticks. It's disgusting. And in any other time in American history, the MAGA Republican Party would be destroyed for even taking that tactic. But that's how low down they are today.